Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a T12D soldering station from Foamfix. Before we get into the content, I want to let you guys know this video is sponsored by Foamfix. They reached out to me and asked me if I'd be willing to take a look at some of their equipment. And when I visited their website, I saw a whole bunch of electronics gear, including soldering stations I thought would be a great fit for the channel. And so they sent me this T12D out for review. I've got a link for this particular unit in the description if you'd like to buy one for yourself. With that out of the way, let's get started. We may as well start with the star of the show. That's the main unit itself. So this is a metal enclosure. It's got the soldering iron connection up front, a temperature gauge, and a button that you can press for a temperature boost if you need it. And then around the back, there's a plug for a grounding strap, the AC input, and a power on and off. I like the unit. It's nice and sturdy. It's all metal. Very cool. I've done some soldering with it and no temperature issues at all. It stays nice and cool to the touch. No issues there. Next up is the soldering iron itself. And as you can see, I've already done some work. This is a T12 unit, which means it's got these soldering tips that are held into place by this little collet. You simply screw that in and that holds the soldering tip in place. And these tips are kind of long. They're, 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 there you go, there it is coming out. One thing I found very fiddly about this unit are there are a couple of holes right there that have to be lined up perfectly inside that handle in order for the temperature to come up. Without that alignment, you get a little error message on the screen. And I can tell you right now it's a little fiddly. I'm gonna give you a warning if you look at this unit. When you put the soldering tip inside and then you turn the unit on, you're gonna to have to twist this iron in order to get those pins to line up. But once they do, it starts transferring heat really quickly. So do not leave your hands on that soldering tip because if you do, you're gonna get burnt. Just a fair warning, it's a little fiddly to get it right, but once it's locked in, it seems to stay okay. Now with the soldering tip inserted into the handle, I'm gonna put the collet on, but I'm not gonna screw it all the way down because I wanna give it a little bit of wiggle room for me to twist it and get rid of the error message so it'll start transferring heat. You gotta make contact with the pins inside the handle. The lead for the soldering iron is keyed, so it only goes in one way. That key goes in at the 12 o'clock position, and then you just screw this knurled nut down, and that kind of locks it in place. One thing I do want to call out is this little silicone pad that attaches to the solder cable. I'm not sure what these things are for. I've never used one before. So I wrote to Phone Fix and asked them, and the response they gave me is it's for clearing the tip. So I'm not sure if they mean for wiping the tip off and cleaning it, or if it's meant to be used kind of like a pot holder to pull the tip out when it's hot. I really just don't know. If you know what these are for, leave a comment in the video and share it with the rest of us. The other thing they included is a cleaning sponge and it's kind of odd because there's really nowhere for it to go. You just kind of, I guess you set it down on the silicone pad. I don't know. That's how I've been using it and then cleaning my tip off with it sitting there. But the odd part is it's kind of kludgy because you have to hold that pad in place. If I were buying this, I would definitely get the version that has the solder holder. They do have a solder pen holder out there. I would get that for sure. This is just a little kludgy and I don't really care for it. They also have a variety of tips out there on their website as well. You can see I've done some testing with the other tips. This is a little chisel tip. This is another pencil tip. So all kinds of options for you depending on your needs. So I've just got a pencil tip in there because we're going to do some real small electronics work with this tonight. Okay, I've got it plugged in and we're going to turn it on. When I do, one of two things is going to happen. We're either going to get a temperature or we're going to get a message that says ERR for error. If we have an error message, that means that I have to twist the tip inside the handle to get those pins to align. So here comes the power. And there's the error message. So now what I have to do is go back to the handle and twist it until I get a temperature readout. And again, be very careful here because once it starts reading that temperature, it's gonna get hot quick. So get ready to take your hand off. There it goes. Now we're starting to get a temperature readout. It's climbing on the screen. And now I'll go ahead and lock that collet down. I mentioned that I would prefer a solder pen holder, but since I didn't get one, I will let you know that you can put the device directly down on the table. All right, we just got a couple of beeps letting me know we reached solder temperature or our pre-configured temperature. So we'll test that out by dropping a little solder on the tip. And there we go. I got a nice little bead there. Okay, I've got a little BEC and I'm gonna just hold it onto my work surface with a piece of blue tack. Now I'm pre pressing on the side of the unit just to kind of get it to stick to this little ceramic coaster that I'm using for a heat surface. And once that's down, that's it. I'm not going to worry about flux because this is a flux core solder. So I'm just going to twist this so I can work on it and we'll see how it does creating a tin on these pads. So just a little bit of heat 
there we go a nice little pad right there there's one of the connections and there goes the second one perfect and the third one very nice and there's the fourth one so four nice little solder balls there no problem all right now i'm just going to connect these wires and the wires are pre-tinned so i'm just going to set that on the pad and give that just a little bit of heat and let that re-harden so there's the power input now we'll do a ground wire i'm just going to re-flow this pad drop my wire on there and get that seated and we'll let it cool that looks good need one more ground wire for the output so we'll reflow that one drop the wire in there and get it to soak up into that wire very nice and then the last one this will be the power output so we'll reflow that pad drop the wire on there get that solder to wick into that wire just a little bit and beautiful there we go Okay, let's take a look at my work. So this is just a BEC, very small gauge wire, and that little pencil tip did a fine job tinning the pads and then reflowing it when I added the wire. So no issues there at all. Nice clean solder job, and as you can see, it even flowed through the other side just a little bit. So everything looks good there. All right, the little T12 soldering station did a fine job on my small electronics project. Now let me tell you a little bit about what I like and what I don't like about this unit. I definitely like the case. That metal case is really nice. It's got that temperature controlled knob up front, which is really easy to operate. One thing that I notice is that when you're around 350 degrees, the temperature doesn't sway too much. It's kind of pretty locked in right there. But as I went higher up on the scale, say all the way up to 450 degrees, which is the peak, it kind of wanders a little bit. And I think the reason for that is because it's got to use a little bit more energy to keep the temperature set at 450 degrees. So the temperature does tend to wander a little bit. I didn't really see that problem at 350 degrees and that's enough temperature for solder anyway. So 350 is just fine. I don't have any problems with the soldering pen itself other than the fact that you've got to twist the tip in order to get it to make contact with those two pins. And that was a little, it's a little fiddly. I just don't have to do that with other soldering irons that I have. So it's a little fiddly, but once you have it locked in, it seems to be fine. It's not like it's cutting off or giving me any problems while I'm soldering. So it's a little fiddly while you're making the change, but I guess that's just the nature of the beast with this type of unit. Overall, I think the unit performed just fine. I didn't have any problems with small electronics. The pencil tip worked really well for that. I was able to solder some fairly small wires on some fairly small pads with no, no fuss, and the temperature transfer seemed just about right. It flowed the solder no problem. I do like that for $20, you've got a temperature controlled soldering station. I can tell you that I've personally bought solder pens on Amazon for about 15 to 20 bucks that do not have temperature control. So this is a really nice feature for that price range. I do wish they would have sent a soldering holder and that silicone pad. I just don't even know what to make of that. Again, if you know what this thing is for, leave a comment. I'm very curious to know how these are used other than maybe cleaning the tip. The pen is up to temperature right now and I can kind of wipe the tip on there, but I don't know that it's cleaning anything. I really just don't know what it's for. The sponge does a much better job cleaning solder off of the tip. Well, that wraps up my first look at the Phone Fix T12 soldering station. I'll remind you I've got a link in the description if you'd like to pick one of these up for yourself. I'd like to say thanks again to Phone Fix for sending this unit out for review. And remind you, if you like this kind of material, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.